The U.S. Air Force's top officer Brown caused a stir with a recent announcement of buying a brand new fifth generation fighter jet to replace hundreds of Cold War F 16s and unreliable F 35. According to Brown, the USAF doesn't just need the NGAD sixth generation aircraft, it requires an affordable, lightweight fighter. To say, improved mix of expensive fifth generation like F-22s or F-35s, making it cheaper, lighter, and faster to be almost invisible for enemies. Now, Hushkit's experts designed a potential fighter, so-called the F-36 Kingsnake, that checks all the boxes of what the Air Force wants. It would be a lightweight, inexpensive fighter jet that doesn't emphasize stealth, making it a 5th gen minus design. It would upgrade faster and more easily and it need not feature such exquisite technologies. However, what failures of the 5th generation is the US trying to solve? Yes, we're primarily talking about the F-35. The 25-ton stealth warplane has become the very problem it was supposed to solve. With a sticker price of around $100 million per plane, the F-35 is a Ferrari. As Brown told reporters, you don't drive your Ferrari to work every day, you only drive it on Sundays. He believed that the F-35 is a high-end fighter to ensure that the USAF doesn't use it all for the low-end fight or simply for day-to-day -day operations. The Air Force spent years painting the F-35 as a flexible, relatively affordable multi-role aircraft capable of outperforming a range of older planes. And it worked. The F-22 Raptor, F-A-18 Hornet, and several jets in the Harrier family were retired because the F-35 was supposed to replace them. But the Air Force and Lockheed baked failure into the F-35's very concept as they tried the F-35 to do too much. There's a small wing version for land-based operations, a big wing version for the Navy's catapult-equipped aircraft carriers, and one more vertical landing model with a downward blasting lift engine for small deck assault ships with the Marines. The complexity of the concept added cost. Rising costs imposed delays. Delays gave developers more time to add yet more complexity to the design, resulting in more cost and longer delays, and so on and so forth. 15 years after the F-35's first flight, the Air Force has just 250 of the jets compared to 1,800 planned to replace aging F-16s and costly F-22s. To say the F-35 has failed to deliver on its goals would be an understatement. Its mission-capable rate is 69%, below the 80% benchmark set by the military. Current and ongoing problems with the F-35 include faster-than-expected engine wear, transparency delamination of the cockpit, and unspecified problems with the F-35's power module. Specifically, the F-35 suffers overheating problems inside the weapon's bay for infrared missiles, which pose several limitations. Infrared seeker heads must be kept cool because they work by detecting heat contrast and too much heat washes out that capability. Moreover, some documents revealed pilot blackouts, premature part failures, software development disasters over the years, and F-35 cracks because of the firing of the main gun. Also, the real problem is that Russians can easily detect and jam Link-16, which provides the F-35 with situational awareness. The F-35 is most likely to encounter a dogfight when the Link-16 NATO data link is being jammed. Since Russia has both ground-based and airborne Link-16 jamming capability over distances of 160 kilometers, this same land-based jamming system called Krasuka-4 was used to incapacitate 59 Tomahawk missiles fired at Shariat Air Base in Syria in April of 2017. Russia has installed a chain of these jammers all along their Arctic coastline. After just a few hundred examples, the Air Force could end F-35 production and redirect spare billions from the annual budget of $700 billion to a new fighter program. But would it be a cost-effective solution? As you remember, the F-35 was pitched to Congress and the world as a way of saving money. Today, the lifetime cost of the aircraft program, including R&D, is estimated to be over $1.5 trillion. So the price of a supposedly cheaper 4.5 generation plane 
could easily match or exceed the F-35's flyaway cost by the time all is said and finally done. So, with all of these F-35 problems, there's another way of saving money. To be precise, the US could adjust plans to keep older aircraft in service. The Air Force has already moved to buy a new F-15EX fighter, as it costs an estimated $20,000 per hour to fly, compared to $44,000 for F-35 flights. Or, for example, the Air Force also can look for affordable F-16, as roughly 1,000 of the aircraft meet the need. The F-16 is the US legend, flying for nearly 45 years with more than 4,600 units built and 3,000 units still used by more than 25 forces worldwide. In brief, the original Falcon F-16 was the first fly-by-wire jet for dogfighting with computer-assisted controls in the US inventory. It has undergone six major block changes, and the latest F-16's Block 60 modular computer could process 12.5 million instructions per second and provide sensor and weapons integration. However, the F-16 is considered old as the flying branch hasn't bought a new F-16 from Lockheed since 2001. As Brown said, the 17-ton, non-stealthy F-16 is too difficult to upgrade with the latest software. The upgraded F-16 could still be a competitive light interceptor for fighter missions in Iraq, Yugoslavia, Libya, Syria, and the like. But it became outdated as a frontline fighter against the Russians or the Chinese, which are peer threats for the US. So instead of ordering fresh F-16s, the Air Force has initiated a clean sheet design for a new low-end fighter. Talking about new F-36 Kingsnake characteristics, experts wanted a fast design process and simple construction techniques as advanced 3D printing technologies to get the fighter off assembly lines faster. As for the shape of the plane itself, the experts suggest a lower density design with surplus volume, surplus electrical generation, as well as minimum onboard computer intelligence and maximum data linking. Reusing existing technologies would speed up the process. For example, the F-36 uses the F-22 Raptor's F-119 afterburning turbofan engine to achieve speeds in the Mach 1.8 to 2 range, rather like the European Typhoon. The F-36 is designed for unreheated supersonic performance at Mach 1.4, using reheat for acceleration up to Mach 2.0. Also, the F-36 has a simple fuselage shape and more efficient F-16 XL wings to be faster than the F-35. The cranked arrow has an inboard section of increased sweepback, creating a controlled high-lift vortex without the need for a foreplane. The wing also allows ample room with fuel and external hardpoints better than the Chinese J-20s and outrange F-22s. Like the F-16 it would replace, the Kingsnake would be a multi-role fighter jet capable of air-to-air -air and air-to-ground missions. The jet would carry missiles and guided bombs in internal bays, but as a non-stealthy plane, it would pack both on wing-mounted external hardpoints. Solving some of the firing problems of the F-35, a new F-36 has an M61 Vulcan gun mounted in the starboard wing route and making it capable of strafing attacks against enemy ground forces. Talking about radars, there are not many innovations. The Kingsnake concept is equipped with an ANAPG-83 Advanced Electronically Scanned Array Radar the same one used in the latest version of the F-16, and an infrared sensor system derived from the Legion electro-optical targeting pod. As for the F-36's name, Kingsnakes are North American snakes that live up to 30 years, which bodes well for the F-36's service life. Kingsnakes are so named because they habitually eat other snakes, a fitting moniker for a fighter designed to replace the Viper. To sum up, the guiding principles behind the F-36 are speed of development, affordability, and the ability to incorporate new tech at a later date. But it's an open question whether the Air Force will ever succeed in developing a light, cheap fighter. The new low-end jet could suffer the same fate as the last low-end jet, the F-35, and steadily gain weight, complexity, and cost until it becomes, well, a high-end jet. So that's all the time we have for today's video. Please give this video a like if you learned something new, and make sure you subscribe so you never miss another video from Front Cost. See you next time.